Welcome to the video series on travel abroad sponsored by the TW Honors Programs at Texas Woman's University. This series of videos is designed to prepare you for what you can expect when you travel with us on our annual travel abroad experience each January. The information here is designed to help you get the most out of your tour experience, to help you learn as much as possible, to help you keep safe, and to keep you healthy along the way. One of the things that I would like to ask for you to do is to take good notes and to be very attentive to these different parts. There are several video parts here. And uh, try to commit a lot of this to memory, if you would, in terms of uh, preparing yourself for your travels. At the end of this uh, series, when we have our orientation class meeting, there will be a quiz uh, over the material on this uh, video series. And I'd like to begin the first video with an overview of etiquette on tour, how to be a good guest. The first thing I want you to think about is why we're going to Europe to begin with. Uh, we're seeking extraordinary experiences and adventures so that we can become better than we were before we left. Better what? Better citizens, both U.S. and global citizens. Better thinkers, better human beings. So we're there because we want a cultural encounter, a cultural encounter that's different from our own. You want to be like the young woman up at the top right, not the guy there holding his burger. Um, one of the most frustrating things that you'll see when you travel overseas with people who haven't been overseas very often from the United States is that they expect the world to be kind of just like the United States, as though Europe is the 51st state of the Union. Um, we're going because it is different. We're going because it's not the United States. And so what I'd like for you to do is to sort of think of all the ways in which you would like to see some differences in terms of culture and history and the ways of doing things. Instead of going over and thinking, why don't they act more like we do? Why don't they do things more like we do? Go over with an open mind and uh, try to think in terms of, well, why do they do this this way? Why do they do it differently than the way we do? We want to be better citizens, and I think we can be better U.S. citizens when we come back home and have a global experience, and we can be better global citizens by understanding our neighbors, even if they are an ocean away, um, better thinkers, better human beings, because we understand other cultures a little bit better. So if that's our goal, what do we need to keep in mind? Well, the first thing, obviously, some of this stuff is, is quite obvious, I know, but be respectful towards citizens of our host country. That includes not expecting them always to speak English, asking politely, courteously, do you speak English? Um, obey the laws of the land. Uh, understand that their laws may be very different from ours, and uh, we have an idea that Europeans are somehow a little bit more loosey-goosey when it comes to legal things and public behavior, but that's not the case at all. And in fact, um, in some ways, there are different kinds of laws than what we expect, and uh, rights to things like privacy, search and seizure, identification in public, uh, it's not quite the same as the United States. If a law enforcement person asks you to do something, you can bet that you need to do it. Um, and uh, be as courteous and polite as you can. Be as respectful as you can of both law enforcement and civilians. You'll find that some people, for example, in France, um, they expect you when you come into their shop to say bonjour. They expect you when you leave to say au revoir. Um, it's simply done. You don't go in and just quietly enter the place and then leave uh, without saying anything. It's considered very rude not to acknowledge the shopkeeper. That goes back to the days when people used to live right above the shops that they had, but it's still a, a tradition, a culture. So, so we're going to be respectful towards the citizens of our host country. And that means making an effort to try to find out what some of those traditions or, or courtesies or publicly polite behaviors are. And it also means making sure that we have an understanding of what the laws require. We don't want to do things that are, that are uh, uh, against the law. Obviously, some things come to mind, but um, but just be very careful in that respect. We want to respect our fellow travelers as well, and that includes being very punctual and courteous. I almost never have problems with, um, oh, I don't know, fist fights uh, on tour. <laughs> Hasn't happened so far. That's kind of not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that it's actually not respectful to your fellow travelers to fail in terms of punctuality. This is group travel. It's not individual travel. The advantages of group travel are 
you've got a bunch of people and you're going to have a shared experience and you have an opportunity to really enjoy this together with other people who are excited and who are from the same sort of uh, cult, country and culture that you're from. Um, and you're all experiencing this thing together and it's a really fun thing to do. Um, the downside is that it's not individual travel. And this is, this is often the biggest hurdle that we have is making sure everyone stays very, very punctual. Um, when you're late and the group is held up, we frequently will be in a position of not being able to see or do what we had planned to do. And there's nothing worse than having someone basically not value other people's time. So a group tour means that you are responsible to others, that you do have to communicate where you are and what you're doing, and you have to stick together and you have to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. You'll hear us talk a lot about this, and I'll go through it a little bit later on in more detail, but that's very important. The other thing is to try to have an attitude of taking the good with the bad. There will be inconveniences. There will be not so pleasant experiences. Always happens. Doesn't matter where it is. Okay. You could be staying five star traveling by private jet and staying, you know, eating in the finest restaurants and things will go wrong. Okay. Um, and so you just have to have an attitude of, I'm going to take whatever bad experience I have and I'm going to make the best of it, or I'm going to learn from it. Um, I once stayed at a hotel where the heat didn't work and we were up in the Alps and it was freezing cold and we made it. It was an experience to remember. Um, we all did fine. <laughs> The next night, we could have killed the hotel manager uh, for not turning the heat on in time. Uh, but uh, it was a thing that you just kind of have to roll with a little bit. If there's something that needs attention, I and the other group leaders and our tour director will make sure that it gets taken care of. We always play, stay in a place that's clean, safe, and, um, and comfortable, or we don't stay there. But uh, sometimes the comfort can be a little bit of a stretch, okay? So I want you to try to come at it with, hey, this is a big adventure, and there's going to be some weird stuff. We had a blowout, a tire blowout, in the middle of a tunnel once on a bus. Everything was fine. We just made the best of it. We went outside, you know, and, and, and danced around a little bit, literally. Um, so come at it with the best kind of attitude. Be open to new experiences and new ways of doing things. And this thing, this I want to really emphasize here. Again, we're traveling there because we're go we want to go to a different country with different customs and traditions and ways of doing things and ways of approaching things. Different types of food. Be open to different types of foods. Try different things. You don't have to like it. You don't ever have to eat it again, but try it. Um, try things you've never tried before. Eat the local specialties. There's got to be a reason why people locally like it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out why some local people like certain foods because they just don't appeal to me, but I'm really game for that. I'm up for trying almost any new kind of experience because I want to know what it's like to do it. You don't want to go over there and say, hey, where's the local Burger King or McDonald's, right? That's just come on. Um, that's not what you're. That's not what you're wanting to do. All that you've saved and sacrificed and planned and 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 studied to have some new experience. So take it all in. Do all these wonderful things. Don't be afraid. Be brave. Be bold. Go out there and try a phrase in French or Italian or German or Spanish or whatever language, right? Give it a try. Take a phrase book with you. Try it out a little bit. People appreciate and admire you when you try to do that. And always, always, always be learning. We're there first and foremost to learn. Every experience is a learning opportunity. And if you look at it that way, from, from for example, from when we go into the subway uh, in some major city, uh, you got to figure out how to use the thing, right? And there may be some English instructions or maybe not a lot, and we got to figure it out. Hey, we got to get from point A to point B here, and we got to do it fairly quickly. So let's use our brains and figure out where we are and what to do and how to get there. Um, and you, you will figure it out. What's wonderful about this is that so many of you who travel with us, maybe you haven't been outside the United States before, maybe you haven't been to where we're going before, but you always come back. You guys are, are the best. You come back and you say, you know, I didn't know how to get across town in Rome or in Paris, but hey, I found a taxi, I communicated with the guy, and we made it on time to where we were going, and I can do anything if I can do that. I can go into a restaurant and not know the language and still be able to eat lunch and reasonably enjoy what I thought 
I was ordering. Um, but then again, I've ordered things that I thought I had ordered and I got something completely different. And you know what I did? I ate it anyway, just to see. And then afterwards I said, hello, I know I ordered the chicken, but this cannot possibly be chicken. Could you tell me what it is? Okay, well, it's either delicious or it's not. But, but um, that's the thing. Every experience is a learning opportunity. Be attentive. Be observant. Ask yourself, why do they do it this way and not that way? Why would they uh, put uh, the table service the way they do? Why do they serve things the way they do? In many countries, uh, when, they, when, when you dine, there are different courses to dinner. Kind of shocks some Americans. They don't put all the food on one plate. They keep bringing more plates, right? You think you're done and you think, oh my gosh, there's another course uh, for dinner. Um, other places, it's very American style. So you just never know. So always be asking questions. No one is annoyed by you asking questions if you do so politely and say, excuse me, can you tell me something? Um, why is that over that way? Why, why, why is that over there? Uh, why, why do you, do, I mean, as long as you do it with, a, with, with respect and, and, and courtesy, people don't don't mind telling you that. Sometimes we find out when people visit our country that we have some peculiar things that we can't really explain either. So be learning about everything, not just about the coursework that we're doing, but everything you can find out about, okay? A few ground rules for our tour. We are organized by groups with group leaders. So my honor staff, and there might be a, a, a TW staff or faculty member with us, we're going to be group leaders, and each of you is going to be belong, belong to one of those groups. This helps us stay organized. This helps us be, be very fast in our head counts. Um, make sure we don't have any lost sheep, and we know who's missing so we can go find you, all those kinds of things. So. Um, when we group up for things like head counts or when we go to museums and we can only bring in maybe 15 or 20 at a time, it helps if we're already organized by group. So I'll have a group and Beth will have a group and, and uh, Taylor will have a group and, and whoever else is going to. So it's that sort of thing. we got a faculty member, that person will have a group, and you'll be in one of those groups. We, don't, we just randomly assort them, okay? And in fact, it's really good if you've got people in your group that you don't even know yet because it's called Make a Friend, right? Um, when we stay at hotels, I want you to think in terms of two-star or three-star hotels, things like you know, the equivalent of a Ramada or a Best Western, not a, like a Motel 6 or a you know, flea bag hotel, but it's not going to be a five-star hotel. It's not the Sheraton. It's not the Ritz-Carlton. It's going to be something sort of typical, budget, middle-of-the-road kind of hotel. Um, up in the right-hand corner, you can see um, the Ibis uh, uh, chain up there. I love Ibis. They're great. They're budget, but they're clean, and they're modern, and they're wonderful, yeah, but they're kind of no frills. Um, and so we'll stay, well, like I said, we won't stay any place that it's, that's not clean, comfortable, and safe. We all Those are our three rules. On our meals, generally speaking, we'll have breakfast included, which in Southern Europe generally is very small. Okay, uh, they tend to eat things like a little bit of cheese and some bread, uh, croissants or rolls, uh, maybe a little bit of yogurt, juice, coffee, that kind of thing. Frequently, it strikes Americans as odd that that Europeans eat a lot of cold cuts for breakfast, but they do. Uh, fruit. Um, you want to load up on fruit, stay healthy, right? Um, some places you might get a hot breakfast, but it's a little unusual. Usually Northern Europe, they're bigger on hot breakfast than they are in the South. Um, and here's the big thing. We'll, we'll, we'll have breakfast uh, each morning and we'll have dinner each evening. And lunch is almost always on your own. Sometimes we have to stop at a place while we're on the road and all eat together at the same place. So there's sometimes there's no choice, but what you eat will be a choice and that'll be on you on you money wise. But dinner is served family style. We all pretty much eat the same thing. Of course, that's subject to your dietary restrictions. We'll do our best to honor those. And we've informed uh, our travel company of who has dietary restrictions and whatnot. And as a result, um, you know, we kind of eat sort of the same thing for the most part, or it's laid out for us. Um, my recommendation is this. About a third of what you eat, you're going to go, wow, that was terrific. That was the best I've ever had. What was that? I really love it. A third of the time, you're going to be, uh, it was okay. I mean, it was, it was decent, you know, nothing to write home about, but nothing bad either. It was filling and decent and okay, hit the spot. Um, and a third of the time you're going to go, eh, not really for me. I didn't care for that. I don't really like that kind of whatever. Um, so be prepared of that. That's just what happens when you have 40 or 50 people eating the same thing. 
about a third of the people are going to go, nah. Uh, about a third of the people are going to go, okay. And a third of the people are going to love it, okay. Um, keep a little money for your lunches, obviously, every day. Keep a little money in case you get something for dinner where you just say, I tried it, but I just can't stand it. It's just awful. I couldn't even finish it. Now I'm hungry, okay. You can go get a snack if you want to before bedtime. But my, my advice for you is this. Please, don't be so dang picky. Try stuff. I mean, I have to force myself too. I mean, I look at something and say that is kind of wiggly and kind of, you know, slimy looking. I don't know if I want to eat that, but I try it anyway because you never know. Uh, sometimes I'm, I regret it, but I believe in being adventuresome, and you should too, for heaven's sakes. So don't be so darn picky. Don't think this is going to be a five star sort of experience because it's not. It's going to be budget travel for college students. That's why it's so inexpensive. But it's going to be safe. It's going to be clean. It's going to be healthy. And if you make the right choices on food, which we'll talk about a little bit later, then you'll stay healthy while you're on tour. Okay. Um, so for example, with coffee, I got to have my coffee every morning. I'm an addict. Uh, European coffee is just not my kind of coffee. But, hey, I have an espresso. It takes the top of my head off, but I have an espresso. <laughs> and I just say, well, that was a quick coffee experience. And now I'm, like, you know, on fire because <laughs> the caffeine is unbelievable. Um, everything's different. Just try it, okay? Now, when we travel and we're in groups, this is why the group leader thing is so important. Frequently, what we'll do when we go from point A to point B is we will tell you, please don't go to the bathroom. Please don't wander off. We're going to do a head count. We're going to get to our next de destination, do a second head count, and then give you free time. When we tell you, and I'll go over this more in detail, especially at the airport, when we tell you don't take a bathroom break, we mean it. We're, we know a lot of people need bathroom breaks frequently. We try our best to do that. But I'll give you an example. Suppose our plane lands in Frankfurt, okay? And we get off the plane and we do a head count and I say, okay, we have to get to gate A12. Um, please do not go to the bathroom until we get to gate A12. So we all do, we all go straight to gate A12. We do a second head count and then I cut you loose for the bathroom. Okay. Now, what that tells you is you probably ought to go to the bathroom before you get off the plane. Okay. <laughs> That's a good piece of advice. We'll tell you some more pieces of advice later on and at our, at our departure meeting. But essentially what that means is that when, while we're deplaning, don't go anywhere. This is true in a lot of occasions, right? When we're on the subway or whatever. Don't, don't wander off and go anywhere. Because what happens is one person says, while everybody's getting off the plane, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. And then that person goes to the bathroom. We do our head count and we're missing that person. And we wait and we wait and we wait. And then someone says, I know, I'll go check the bathroom to see if she's there. And then that person goes and the search party goes and looks for the first student. Meanwhile, guess what happens? The first student comes back and we say, okay, now you're here, but our search party is missing. Okay. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So you, you, you have to really be attentive and follow our instructions when we're traveling from point A to point B. Cause when we tell you not yet, not yet, hang on, hang on, we're going to get there. Then we'll do a head. Then, then we get to a 12 and I say, great. Thank you. Hey, bathroom time. Everybody meet back here in 20 minutes. Cause we've got to catch our next flight. And it works so much better, so much better. So be prepared prepared for that. Another thing that you need to know about is this, is that when you agreed to travel with us as part of a TW sponsored group, uh, you are going to be asked to consent to our terms and conditions. Now that's going to be uh, on Teradata. The uh, the inter the education abroad folks are going to tell you how to access all that, but you're going to need to agree to our terms and conditions, and that has to do with your student conduct. I don't like to spend a lot of time on it because most of our students actually are wonderful, terrific students. I mean, I, we rarely, rarely have a problem, and I I, I can legitimately say that I, I brag about you guys all the time to other honors directors and other faculty members, and they say, well, what do you do if you know people like murder each other? Well, that, that hadn't happened. Um, you know, what if you do if someone smuggles cocaine? Well, that hasn't happened either. Um, so you guys are generally very wonderful travelers and wonderful companions to have. And um, But from time to time, some people get a little bit out of line. And you need to know that we will enforce the terms and conditions and that we will enforce university policies. What are some things that can get you evicted from the group? And by evicted, I mean actually sent home on your own dime. Um, the university won't send you back home on its money. You'll have to pay the extra money it will take to get you back home. One would be antisocial behavior. 
uh, I don't think anybody here is antisocial, but, you know, be, be cognizant of your language and your behavior, especially things that are racist, intolerant, disruptive, bullying remarks or actions. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Be, being a decent human being, which 99.9% .9 of you always are. Um, taking stuff that's not yours, kind of not right. We learned that in preschool, right? Um, drinking, especially to excess or drug use. If drinking is inappropriate for your age, um, certainly drug use, not appropriate. I had one person who was abusing diet pills, so it doesn't even have to be illegal drug use. If we think that the that the medications that you're taking are excessive or causing an unsafe situation, we're going to we're going to have you go home, okay? Unsafe behavior like hanging out of windows of moving buses or balconies and things that don't do that kind of stuff, right? You don't want to do that. Cuz I, I we've never had somebody injured while we were on tour. I don't ever want it to happen. Failure to follow the group leader instructions. If you just simply disregard those, then that is reason to send you home. Violation of other group policies as detailed in the uh, terms and conditions. Physical violence, obviously, is smack somebody in the nose. We're going to send you home, right? We don't do that. We don't hit people, right? Um, inappropriate public behavior. I'm going to let your imagination wander on that. We've not really had anybody do that, but I have heard other groups where people weren't exactly appropriate in public. Use your imagination, as I said. And then violating local laws. We can't have you do that because if you do that, then it's going to be really hard to get you home um, because you're going to be sitting in a jail cell. So the young woman down there in the bottom right-hand corner there, where is she? She's at an airport. Where? Who's she with? Nobody. She's all alone with her little bag. And she's sad. Why? Because she got evicted from the group because she did something inappropriate or she did something, she took something or she was antisocial or whatever. Um, um, don't let that be you. We don't want that to be you. Um, I have not had to do anything drastic with any of our travelers. Usually if uh, somebody's out of line, we fill out a conduct report. We have a conversation. Um, if it only happens once and if it's not of a severe nature, then we just let that you know, end up with just being a, a conversation between us. If it continues or if it's of a serious nature, then we'll come back to TWU and report that to the Vice President for Student Life. Um, and if it is a very serious matter, we'll send you home. I hate to be Debbie Downer on this, and I've not had to do that very often, as I said, but it is important that you know that. We're asking you to sign the terms and conditions, and um, we take those very seriously. Okay. Having said that, we kind of have a, um, uh, a, 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 a policy where we are our sister's keeper, so we want you also to be looking out for each other. Somebody does something dangerous. Don't worry about being a snitch. Worry about whether something bad's going to happen to him, and then what are you going to think about yourself the rest of your life because you didn't say something, okay? We don't, we, we're not trying to look for people to be informants and snitches. We just want everybody to be safe and enjoy themselves. Well, that's the end of our first part. We're going to have another part coming up here where we're talking about staying safe and staying healthy on tour. So uh, be sure to watch that video as well.